Hello and good morning. This is Nancy Sawyer here, here for Life Coach University with another Pay It Forward talk. The Pay It Forward platform is incredible. What we do is we come on here and teach you a little bit um, about life, give you some life lessons, some things to reflect on. And it's all free because Life Coach University wants to make coaching available to millions more. We wanna pay it forward and make this available to everyone all over the world. And all we ask for you in return, from you in return, is that you pay it forward in some way as you go about your day today, maybe buy someone a cup of coffee, give a kind word to someone, share a tip that you learned today with someone else. It's a really great idea, and I'm glad that you're here with me today. <clears throat> Again, I'm Nancy Sawyer. I am a life coach who focuses on midlife mastery. I help people after they've been through challenging midlife events, such as divorce, uh, losing a parent, becoming an empty nester. And also if they're just kind of feeling stuck and need some help, to start their next chapter. So I am here to help you and guide you and uh, walk the path with you as you're going through your life's journey. I am glad to be here today. And today we were gonna talk about healing after divorce. Um, if you've been here and seen some of my talks before, I want you to know, I want to remind you that I do use some notes because otherwise I tend to get very off topic. Um, this week I'm nursing a cold, so if I have to clear my throat, um, I do have my tea here. Um, if I have to clear my throat, <clears throat> please bear with me. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for allowing me to show up authentically as me today. If you have questions or comments, you can put them in the, um, let's put them in the Q&A. And that should be there. And what I'll do is I might stop. Um, part way through, or I might save them to the end. I'll see how the flow goes with me today. Um, so let me just get my tech settled here and let's get started. So if you have been through a divorce or a significant breakup, I wanna welcome you. I want to let you know that this is a safe space. You might feel like you've been through the ringer and you might just need to breathe. It's perfectly fine, by the way. Maybe you've been divorced for a while now, maybe a few months or a few years even, and you might feel a little stuck in the post-divorce space. Maybe it's more recent and your pain is very fresh and you're wondering how to get through the next few days and months. <clears throat> I'm going to offer some tips today that I hope will help you to begin to heal and move forward. I'm gonna give you action items that you can do along with some support. I'm also going to offer you some tough love, which I hope will land gently and encourage you to move forward. Know that I am here with the intention to share love and kindness with you and to help you create a happier future for yourself and for your loved ones. I'm also going to throw out a lot of questions today. It might seem overwhelming, <clears throat> excuse me. I want you to know that you don't have to answer all the questions. I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff out there at you, okay? I want you to take the questions and the tips that resonate with you. And I want you to bring them forward into your day and into your week ahead. So I want you to just take a, Take a time, take a minute to sit with me. I want you to think of your life as a timeline, a timeline. Like if this is when you're born and this is when you die, right? There's a long timeline there. And right now, this is a short window of time in a very long journey of your life. I want you to think back, think about high school or college or some other part of your life that taught you lessons but that went by quickly. Maybe it's your first job out of college that you did for two years and then you moved on. <clears throat> Does it seem like long ago? Did it fly by? Do you remember how you felt when you were in it? 
Most likely you won't remember all the details. You'll just have a general feeling about it. And you might remember some lessons that you learned from that time. So of course, of, over the course of your life, there are gonna be good times, there are gonna be difficult times that you've been through, right? <clears throat> As you think back now to the times you've been through, are there difficult times that you've been through, that you've made it through, that when you were in it, you were kind of like, I don't know how I'm going to get through that. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I want you to remind yourself that you did get through that and you will get through this as well. For me, I look back at my mid-20s after college and I think, wow, that was a really tough time. <clears throat> I was really unhappy and I was actually dealing with depression and I didn't get the help that I needed, but I did get through it. And I'm glad that I survived that time. Now I know what depression feels like. And if I ever feel like that again, I'll get help. <clears throat> Excuse me. So know that in a few years from now, what you're going through right now will be in your past. You're going to look back at it. And so my goal is to have you be able to look back at this time as a time of rediscovering who you are a time of growth, a time of understanding more about yourself, a time of reclaiming your power. So what can you do now so that in a few years you are looking back at this time as the opportunity that it is? The most basic thing to do is to recenter yourself and try and get grounded. Divorce can make you feel like you've been tossed around in a washing machine. It's just all this stuff coming at you and it's upside down and all over the place. And then it just spits you out. And you kind of land and you're like, wow, what just happened? So I want you to breathe. Take time to breathe. You might have moved. Your kids might be going to a new school. You might have new routines. You might even have a new job. You might have moved to a new city. There are unfamiliar surroundings, unfamiliar habits and routines. You might be lonely. There are lots of uncomfortable things going on right now. I want you to remind yourself that you're going to be okay. You have made it this far. And now you're poised for a better future. You're now in control of your life. You have an opportunity and you have power to take that control and create the next chapter for yourself. So I'd like you to reclaim your power. Consider this as an opportunity. Although you may feel powerless over many things, you do have power, okay? There are only certain things we can control in our lives and it's important to focus on the things that we can control. So you have the power to pay attention to what you focus on, to where you put your attention to, to your mindset. Sometimes after divorce, we get stuck in anger and negative thought patterns. Sometimes we get stuck playing the victim. Do you find yourself saying, well, he did this, she did that, they screwed me over. Look, while those things may be true and the life that you had or dreamed of is no longer, I want you to make a decision. I want you to, to decide here and now that you will not let that ruin your future. I want you to decide that even if you were a victim of bad behavior during your marriage, you don't have to continue to be a victim. So maybe that ruined your past, but you don't have to let it ruin your future. So how do we do that? How do we not let it ruin the future? What we have to do is leave the past in the past. And that can be really difficult, especially in our society that perpetuates a lot of negativity. Here's what I want you to do, and here's how to do it. Stop focusing on the negative of what happened to you <clears throat> and stop complaining about it. 
You have to move forward by focusing your attention on your future and what you are doing to create it rather than on retelling the story of what happened to you. It's a small shift, but it has significant results. So I want you to become aware of your conversations. What are you talking about with your friends, your family, your coworkers? You see, when we complain or retell the story over and over again to anyone who will listen, when we're saying, oh, my ex was such a fill in the blank, right? They cheated on me, they left me, she was toxic, he was abusive, whatever it is, even though that was very real for you, every time you retell that story, you are keeping yourself in pain. You're reliving it. You're holding on to the hurt and the anger. So it's important to release that, okay? If you need to have some therapy, get a therapist, seek out some, some a counselor so that you can move forward and let go of that anger and that pain, okay? But don't keep holding on and retelling the stories of what happened to you because that keeps you in victimhood, okay? We don't wanna do that to ourselves. We deserve better. You deserve better, okay? Something else. Maybe you've moved on from that but you're obsessing over everything that your ex is doing. Are you following them on social media and then calling your best friend over everything they post? <clears throat> Are you complaining to your coworkers about the annoying or hurtful thing they did this week? And do you continue those conversations every week or every time something else happens? If you're focusing your energy on what your ex is doing, you're hurting yourself and you're keeping yourself stuck. You cannot control what they do. You can only control what you do. So it's your choice. Do you wanna focus on the pain from your past or do you wanna focus on your future and what you can create for yourself? <clears throat> So just imagine for a minute, if you used your incredible energy and your words to focus on what you are doing now, how you are creating your future. Think about what gifts you have now that you didn't have before. Do you have a new place that you're living in? Maybe you finally get to paint the walls the color you want. Maybe you love cooking meals and now you can cook food nice and spicy just the way you like it. What opportunities do you have now that you didn't have when you were married or in the relationship? Try and find the good and focus on the good. We really want to work to no longer be a victim. And we want to step into our power. So take the focus off your ex and put it on you. It's your choice. Okay? Stay in pain or in anger or move forward. Have you ever noticed, sometimes we notice that our ex moves forward and we get even angry at that, right? Think about that for a minute. Getting angry at someone for not choosing to stay in pain. It does make you wonder, huh? So how do we begin to move forward for ourselves? What can you do to help yourself to, to get unstuck and to move forward? Well, it all starts with self-care. If you've um, been to one of my talks before, you know that I consider myself to be a self-care superstar and I come first before anyone or anything else. And when we make that shift, we can then give ourselves what we need so we can show up as a better version of ourselves for everything else in life, okay? So put yourself first. Self-care is not selfish, okay? So we wanna renew. I want you to renew yourself. How can you do that? You know, your divorce may have been traumatic. It may have left you feeling less confident. Again, if you're feeling depressed or traumatized, please seek out a therapist. But otherwise, at least what you want to do is pick yourself up and dust yourself off. Remind yourself that you are awesome. 
maybe start a journal and each day write down two or three things that are great about you or that you did well today or yesterday or that others appreciate about you. It's time to build yourself up, okay? A lot of times we are left with little confidence, little self-confidence. We need to rebuild that confidence. What about exercise? Are you exercising? Get up and move, even if it's just 10 minutes a day. Exercise naturally boosts serotonin, which is the happiness hormone. So you don't have to join a gym. You don't have to invest any money in gym equipment or something expensive. It can be as simple as taking a brisk walk, <clears throat> maybe even twice a day. Get that heart rate up on a regular basis and you will feel better. Being outside in nature is also something that lifts the spirit. It's known to do that. So that's something else if you can add into your day. For me, when I work throughout the day, I work from home. I set a timer on my phone. I work for 50 minutes of every hour. And then I get up for 10 minutes and I go for a walk outside. Most of those 10, most of the time, those 10 minutes I spend outside just walking, doing a brisk walk around the block. It really helps to keep me focused and to keep my mood lifted. So something else I want you to do, I want you to shift your focus. Reflect on what you want now. Now that you're divorced, the dream has changed, okay? When you were married, you, you, had, a, you had certain dreams that were part of the marriage, okay? Those probably aren't there anymore. There might be parts of them, but that dream is changing. So if you're still holding on to that dream that you had when you were married, it's time to let it go. Acceptance is the word that's coming up for me right now that I want to offer you. This can be hard and painful, <clears throat> but excuse me, you do have to be honest with yourself. I want you to know that by letting go, you're creating free space in your brain to focus on a new future, a new dream. Remember, life is a long journey, okay? There are many, many years ahead of you. This is an opportunity to turn the page and start a new chapter. Have you thought lately about what is your why or what is your purpose? What is bigger for you than the day-to-day -day stuff? What's your end game? Maybe it's to raise happy, healthy children. Is it to make a difference in your community? Maybe you're in a career where you help people on a daily basis and you want to continue to do that in an effective way. Maybe your divorce has taken some of the joy out of your work and it's time to get reconnected with what you love about your job. Think about your legacy, what you're leaving. I want you to take a moment and think about a few years from now, five years, 10 years, 15, 20, what do you want to have left behind you? <clears throat> okay, another step in your recovery after divorce is to reframe your divorce or relationship. Again, we wanna to work towards moving past the anger and past the hurt. Let's look at the past. Are there lessons that you can learn? What did you learn? What are the gifts from the, from the marriage or from the relationship that you can take forward? Consider how your life would be different if you didn't learn this or if you didn't have some of the good experiences that you had in that relationship. You've built some skills now. Just by going through this divorce, and landing on the other side, you have more skills. You've probably put up with a lot of crap. It's probably been painful. There have been days where you, you've had no idea how you're gonna get through them, right? You have new skills now. You can take those skills with you. They're there, you got them. You can take them with you into your future, okay? I want you to work on reframing this, this period of time, that divorce time, into a story of growth and of survival. Again, note the strengths that you have. Note the lessons you've learned. Note 
how strong you've become now that you have been through this, okay? So reframe that. Instead of saying, oh, the divorce was an awful time, you can say something like, geez, I learned I was stronger than I ever thought I was. I learned how to stick up for myself. I learned how to, um, you know, how to negotiate. Whatever it is, what are, what are the gifts? What are the things, the lessons that you learned through that? Note those and acknowledge them. Those are important to bring forward. <clears throat> the next thing I want to bring up is about reviewing your relationship and your relationship patterns. This is really important to do before you hop into another relationship. If you're already in, in another relationship, that's fine too. Sometimes what happens is we get out of a marriage or, or a relationship and we go right into another one and we repeat the same pattern. We haven't done the work to understand what we brought to the table, what happened in that relationship, okay? So I do want you to take some time um, to think about what patterns have you had in relationships? What about the partners you've chosen? Are there any similarities in your boyfriends and your husband or husbands or wives or wives, whatever it is, right? Are there any similarities with these people? How have you shown up in the relationship? What was great about the past relationship? What did work? What didn't work? What were the hard parts of your past relationships? Are there any commonalities? When we can identify patterns, then we can identify what in us needs healing or what in us needs some work or some attention, yeah? So be honest with yourself about what you bring to the table. What are your triggers? What upsets you? How do you react, okay? We can be very self-aware when we can do that then you are in a better space to have a healthy relationship for next time <clears throat> so the next step is to reclaim yourself put a stake in the ground right accept who you are and, and who you want to be right what do you want your life to look like you know where it is right now what do you want it to look like you have the power, you have choices every day, right? What choices are you making? Are you making choices that serve you? Are you making choices that hurt you and keep you in pain? This means how are you, who, who are you surrounding yourself with, right? Are you surrounding yourself with people who are keeping you, keeping you in pain or who are drudging up the past? Um, pay attention to that. It does make a big difference. I want you to think about what new habits you might need, what new things you want to learn. What can you change up? Because this is, again, a great opportunity for you to turn the page, start a new chapter. What have you always wanted to do that you put aside because you were married or had kids or were taking care of your spouse? What are those things that you put down when you got married that you can pick up again? What are the things that you've always wondered about that you didn't have the time to do? How can you incorporate those into your life in some small way? Get curious. I want to lead you in a little visualization right now. Because as you're in this space, again, with a whole life ahead of you, maybe it's a whole second half of your life, however many years you have. So we're gonna do a little visualization. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about meeting your older, wiser self. Think about you in, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years. Maybe you're 80, 90 years old. You walk into the room and you see yourself as an old woman or man who has lived a very full, 
happy life. They are happy, content, and very glad to greet you. Picture them, get very clear. What are they wearing? Are they sitting? Are they standing? Can you picture their face? What does their space look like? Now, I want you to walk in and I want you to have a conversation with them. What do they want to tell you about this time that you're going through right now? You see, your older, wiser self is available to you. You can visit them anytime by sitting quietly and doing a simple visualization. So as you come back and open your eyes, did your older, wiser self have anything to say to you? I want to remind you, life is a very long journey. And this is a small window of time in the big scheme of life, your big journey of life, okay? So sometimes we get into modes of thought where my life is ruined, my life is over. It's not, I promise you, okay? This is a small window of time. So what I want you to focus on is how are you growing? What are you learning that you can take with you into your future? If you are in the time where it's, the divorce is very fresh and new and the pain is very um, sharp, it's okay to just get through one day at a time. It's okay to do just what you need today for you, okay? It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel hurt. It's always, it's okay to be angry. Okay, but know that if that's where you are right now, you're just, you're in a tunnel. This is how I explain it to my clients all the time. You're in the tunnel right now. Okay, it's dark in that tunnel. And when you're in the tunnel, it's very important to look up and find that sliver of light that's coming through, coming through the ceiling, right? So each day, try and find a couple things that you're grateful for. Sometimes when I was in that tunnel, sometimes I was just, I'm grateful for my coffee. I'm grateful for my spot on the couch. I'm grateful for the birds singing outside. It doesn't have to be anything big, earth shattering, but when we can start finding something we're grateful for, it gives us something to look forward to, okay? So if you're in that tunnel, know that you will come out of the other side of the tunnel. And while you're in it, it's important to look for that light in the tunnel every day, okay? Hopefully, every day that you go on, it will become more and more light, okay? So, as you are moving forward, we want to reinforce what you've learned from this. We want to have boundaries. We want to pay attention to what you're allowing in your life. Are you allowing things that bring you down? Do you need to say no to certain things? How do you need to protect yourself and the new life that you're trying to create, that you are creating? What boundaries do you need to have in place? I want you to pay attention to that and you have to reevaluate every once in a while. What is serving you? What's not serving you? what's going well in your life. All of these questions that I'm throwing at you, in case you haven't noticed, it's all about self-observation. As you move forward, it's going to be very important to regularly observe yourself. How are you interacting with the world? How are things affecting you? What environments are you putting yourself in? And how do you feel in those environments, okay? The way to self-growth and to happiness and fulfillment is to become an observer of self, to step outside yourself. 
So when we react in a strong way, negatively or positively, right? That's, that's information. Feelings are information. And when we start paying attention to those, when we shut off the autopilot and start paying attention, that's how we can create a life we love, okay? So as you are recovering after divorce, as you're moving forward, focus your attention on you and what you can control rather than on what your ex is doing or on what anyone else is doing. I also want to caution you. Our society is very negative about divorce. And oftentimes we have friends and family who will want to talk badly about your ex. Don't fall into that trap, okay? There's a reason you fell in love with this person, okay? You probably had some good times. Please bring with you the good times and let's not make everything worse um, by talking poorly about other people, okay? Sometimes our behavior, people do things that hurt other people, okay? So we all make mistakes. We all have poor behaviors. We are all works in progress, okay? So just because someone did something bad and it didn't work out or something that hurt you, it doesn't mean we need to beat them up for the rest of our lives, okay? Humans are the only people, or the only um, species on the planet that makes people pay over and over for this for one mistake, right? We we berate people and we make we make them pay over and over for one thing. It's not okay to do that, okay? So you're going to be happier and healthier if you can move on and move beyond that. Um, and of course, if you have children, you already know that. Um, you know, speaking poorly of, of the other parent doesn't help very much. So how can you seek to co-parent in a way that's healthy? How can you, um, you know, go to sleep at night knowing that you did the best you could, even if the other person isn't ready to receive it? Um, at the end of the day, you have to have your back and it's all about you. So I hope that you give yourself the love you deserve, the care that you deserve, and that you know that you're worthy. You're worthy of your own love and love from others. I'm going to just check the, um, see if we have any questions in here. Someone says, my partner often threatens to leave. This is helping me to not be afraid of getting a divorce. Okay, so if your partner is threatening to leave, you know, I, my question is, how is your communication? Why are they threatening to leave? Um, threatening to leave isn't, you know, I would assume that if someone's threatening to leave, they're probably asking you to change some behavior, right? If people are threatening to leave, it's because they don't like something that's going on. So I would encourage you to, if it's possible, sit down with that person and have a have a discussion. What what are the behaviors that are not working, right? You know, if if you're a marital, if you're married or in a relationship, you're a unit, right? And you have your needs, they have their needs, and you somehow have to come together and work together to make sure everybody's getting their needs met. Okay. Sometimes that works out fairly easily. Otherwise, other times it really isn't. So if you can find out why are they threatening to leave? What, do, what are they not liking about the situation? If that is something that you can say, you know, maybe they say you work too much and you're not home enough. I don't know. Um, let's just take that as an example. If you're not home enough, that's, and that's what the problem is, then that's on, you know, up to you to say, well, maybe I can be home more. But what we have to know is that the other person asks for something, and it's up to you to say, does that work for you or not, okay? When we get into spaces where we demand things of other people or we re require things of other people, that's usually a lose-lose situation. You wanna approach any discussion as a, a safe space that we can come in and say, hey, what's going on for you? 
How are you feeling about this? What's not happening for you that you want to see, right? And when you can sit down calmly and discuss those things without um, getting angry or taking it as criticism, that's when we can find a path forward together. I hope that's helpful. And there's another question here. It says, what pains me the most is when my little one asks for daddy. I feel crazy jealous to know that he has already found someone new. I'm angry that he gets to move on and I am trying to be strong for the children. Any tips on how to stop the jealousy and anger? Wow, that's a great question. And I'm sorry to hear that you're in that space. <sighs> I understand the jealousy. Um, I understand that you're angry. So what's gonna be important for you is for you to start and heal. And I, I totally get the being strong for the children. I'm gonna share with you a little bit about me. After my divorce, I became literally like a robot. I had to be so strong um, and show up for the children every day to keep that solid foundation and what I thought would be right for them that I stopped feeling any emotion. And that really wasn't good. Um, so yes, we do have to be strong for the children. It's also okay though, that your children know you don't have to be completely solid for them. It's okay that they know that you're upset, okay? Children need to know that we are people too, okay? The jealousy and the anger is a result of focusing on the other person, okay? So, how do you stop jealousy and anger? You kind of can't, but what you want to do is you want to shift your focus. You want to shift your mindset and your attention to you. What do you need, right? What do you need? How can you give yourself the love that you're seeking from someone else? The journey to self-love is complicated and it is long, but what you need to understand is that you are worthy of love, okay? And you are worthy of giving yourself that love. Try not to focus on the other person. If you need to do things to distract yourself, go right ahead. Get a good tribe of friends around that will support you. Maybe try something new. Sometimes picking up a new hobby or joining a new group or um, even picking up a part-time, a new part-time job. I started working at a store on Saturday nights uh, shortly after my divorce. So I wasn't home, sitting home crying, being sad that I was alone. So what can you do to occupy your time that shifts your focus and makes you see that there's a whole lot more to life than what you're just feeling that you're missing right now? As far as dealing with your, um, when your child asks for daddy, that's really hard. And all you can do, I mean, from my standpoint, is hold them, let them know they're loved, and let them know that they'll see daddy soon. You know, I don't know what your custody arrangement is, obviously. I hope that uh, they do get to see their daddy on a regular basis. And you can just say, it's okay to miss daddy. You'll see them soon. And then we try and redirect. Hey, do you want to go do a puzzle? Or do you want to go read a book? Or something like that, right? We want to try and redirect um, that sadness, acknowledge it and redirect it. I hope that's helpful. Okay, so it looks like that's about what we have for questions right now. So I just want to kind of wrap this up. So I want I want to remind you that you are amazing and that this is a small window of time. I know it is hard. Seek out support. There are even, there are Facebook groups like for life after divorce or if you're divorced, um, seek out some sort of support. There might be a divorce, local divorce group in your community. Um, what can you do to occupy your time and meet new people? And I'm not talking about getting into a new relationship. I'm talking about 
getting yourself out there and being around different types of people so that you can see that there are lots of opportunities. A lot of times we get stuck. We think our world has ended and we don't see any path forward. So trying new things, reaching out. Um, I'm always here. You can find me um, through my contact information, which I'll give at the end. And I'm always here. I'll have a call with you. We'll have a Zoom. I'll be glad to talk to you and um, see what we can do. I'm great with ideas and um, a good listener as well. So remember, you're incredible. I want you to acknowledge how far you've come. Okay. You've been through a lot. You've gotten through a lot. Okay. Celebrate yourself for getting through the tunnel or halfway through the tunnel or out of the tunnel, wherever you are, okay? Begin a habit of self-acceptance, of loving yourself. Help yourself to thrive by giving yourself what you need. Give yourself love, give yourself care. Get out there and exercise, meet new people, right? Begin a journey of rediscovering yourself. Try some new things, see what you like. Never stop learning and growing and striving. Show up as a better version of yourself by giving yourself what you need, including rest, by the way. So understand that you have power, okay? You have power and you get to choose what you focus on. And when you focus on yourself and giving yourself what you need, you're going to be happier. Your potential is unlimited. All right, so I want you to keep going. Remember that you are amazing and you deserve love. All right, thank you for joining me today. This has been a pay it forward talk. Please pay it forward in any way that works for you. I hope that you have some takeaways from today and that my questions were not too overwhelming. I hope you got some tips that you can take away uh, that are helpful to your process. Uh, you can find me at nancybsawyer.com. My program, Reclaiming You, offers a six-month uh, transformation program to rediscovering you and re rediscovering your joy after divorce. You can learn more by going to my website. You can get on my mailing list too, and I'll keep you updated on opportunities to work with me and on what's coming up. I want you to have an incredible day, and I want to thank you for joining me today on Life Coach University. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.